So my name is Felipe Leme. I'm a software engineer in the Android Framework team, and I'm the technical lead of the Android Autofill Framework with the topic of today's presentation. So our goal today is to give a quick introduction of what Android Autofill is and uh, why it's important for you to optimize our apps for it. So the Android Autofill Framework is a new feature that we introduced last year on Android Audio release, and the goal is to provide a safe and uh, fast way for a password manager to do their jobs. So basically, to use Autofill, you need to select an uh, Autofill service, which is, could be a service that's provided by the OEM, like a Google Autofill or Samsung Pass, or you can install a third-party app, like a password manager, like a, a LastPass, Dashlane, OnePassword, uh, Inpass, and so on, and many others. Last time I checked, there is about uh, 30 different apps on the uh, Play Store that provides an Autofill service. And uh, one key decision we made when we designed this API was that it should work out of the box with the existing apps. In other words, you as an app developer, you don't need to change our app to support autofill, because if you don't do anything, most likely the password manager will figure out what to do for you. But just because you don't need to change it doesn't mean you shouldn't. After all, it's your uh, app that's on the line, and you don't want to depend on the third-party app, which you don't have control over. So the rule of thumb, the main tip that I would like to give is you should not rely on the autofill service heuristics. Rather, you should provide your own tips, like you want to make sure that the password manager or the autofill service do their job properly. And you could, can do that quickly or easily by just annotating your XML views. So the first thing you should do, you should uh, make sure that you annotate what should be autofilled. And you do that using the Android column autofill hints tag. So let's take a quick look on example. Let's say you have the traditional username and password login screen. So if, you're, if you don't do anything at all, if, if you don't annotate your apps for out of field and uh, your layout XML is using Android IDs like a username field and password fields, most likely it's going to be work fine because when the password manager see this view structure, they're going to be using some heuristics and they're going to say, okay, there is a username substring here and a password here, so they will know this is username and password fields. Now let's say you are a software house in Brazil and you like to use uh, names in Portuguese. I actually grew up in Brazil, and I know this is kind of common. So now my research IDs are called Campo Usuario and Campo Senha, and this is totally valid from the Android point of view. So now the password manager, they will get this view structure, and they will know what these fields mean. So basically, they're not going to be providing the autofill data, and the user will have to manually type in the username and password, which is exactly the kind of problem they try to avoid with a password manager. So the solution for this problem, you simply annotate your views. So with the Android column autofill hints. In the case of username, use username, and password, use password. And uh, on view.java, we actually we provide uh, uh, hints for the common fields, like username, password, credit card number, telephone number, etc. Now, there is also the other issue, which it is uh, you should also annotate what should not be autofilled, and you do that using the Android column important for autofill tags. So just to see another uh, real example, when I was developing this API last year, at one point, I want to send an SMS to my friend, and then I got to pop up with my own telephone number as the recipient of the SMS. That doesn't make sense, right? Because uh, when you're set, when you're composing an uh, SMS or email or a spreadsheet editor, usually you, you want to type something dynamically. You don't want to use the predefined values that Pattern Manager has. So this was kind of uh, annoying for me because I knew the API, but it could be confused for a user that doesn't. So the solution for this case is simply should disable all of you for your activity. And you can do that on, on the uh, whole activity layer by annotating the root view with important for autofill equals no exclude descendants. So now, not only you don't risk the password manager provide the data where it doesn't make sense, but you also improve the performance because you're not triggering autofill at all. So these are, I would say, are my main tips. And uh, let's say I convinced you to use these tags and you are so excited to uh, change your app that you're going to skip the rest of the presentation of the, the summit, go back to your laptop and change your app. So now, how, I mean, don't, don't do that, but uh, if you do, uh, how, how are you gonna change, how are you gonna test your changes? Remember, you need to select an autofill service to see what would be the data provided by the service. And uh, your first uh, impulse might say, okay, let me just choose whatever comes with my device, like Google Autofill or Samsung Pass, or maybe I'll install a third-party password manager. Well, if you do that, you could do that, but again, you're gonna go back to that problem of relying on the password manager heuristics, in other words, Maybe they will provide out of your data without your changes, so you're not going to really see what, what's uh, is going on if you make these changes. So my suggestion is to test with using standard out of your service, and we provide some of them on the official samples that is hosted on GitHub. 
So basically, we provide a couple of auto fill service implementations at project. One of them is called Basic Service, which is a, a basically is a service that only understands auto fill hints. So if you uh, have if you're using auto fill hints on your app, when the user click on a field, you're gonna see this uh, pop up like this. Like they, 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 we know because you said that this field is username, you see this username options. On the other hand, if you're not using these hints, then the auto fill uh, the basic service wouldn't show anything. This is also a pretty quick, pretty simple service. It has like less than 200 lines of code. So if you're interested in understanding how an auto fill service works, it's a good uh, example as well. Now, we have another service that's quite the opposite. It's called debug service. So this one tries to fill anything. So if you don't use the auto fill hints, they're still going to try to auto fill based on your uh, resource IDs. And this is useful to test what would happen if you're not tagging your uh, views with imported for auto fill equals no. So for example, back to my SMS uh, app, you would see something like this. When you click on two, you're going to see this um, uh, pop up with, with uh, some user uh, out of field data, which is two, which is just the name of the resource ID. So you could see how confused it would be for a user if they see an app, uh, something like that on their app. Now, uh, the final tip I would like to give is uh, you should also make sure that your app works when the out of field service requires authentication. So what that means? Well, most password managers, they don't return the user data right away because the data might be encrypted or might be locked somehow. So they're going to ask the user to authenticate. So the user might need to type a master password or maybe user fingerprint to unlock the data. And uh, the way the framework works, we're going to be launching a new activity that belongs to this service on top of your uh, app's stack. So the user is going to do the authentication. And when the user finishes, your activity resumes. So for most like, apps, this is not going to be a problem. But if your app is doing something weird on the, on the activity resume, let's say you're reinvalidating uh, uh, rebuilding the view hierarchy or using some web view to do some JavaScript code dynamically. So basically, there, this, you might break the auto view as we're going to see in the next slides. So again, to test this, uh, to make sure that your app works on this scenario, you need an auto view service that requires authentication. And the simplest way to do that is using the debug service. So when you uh, launch the settings for the debug service, actually, first you need to enable auto view and select the service so you can uh, click on the bottom and select the debug service. You see the debug out of your service is one of the options we provided that sample. Then you can select these authenticate response options. It's on the top. Now, when you go back to your app, when, when you trigger out of you, instead of getting the data unlocked, you're going to be uh, had, get this prompt to authenticate. So when the user taps this prompt, we launch an activity. In this case, it just asks for yes or no. So now, when you click in yes, in this case, let's say that from this screenshot, I'm using a sample app where I'm explicitly uh, recreating the view hierarchy on start. So basically, when I click yes, we return to our activity. But now, from the framework point of view, all the data is different. So they don't know that they have the locked data for your, for your username field because it's a different ID. So it's going to show the tap to authenticate response again. So when the user click there, it launches the authenticate and say, yes, sure, I want to authenticate. And then you go back, ask to authenticate again. So basically, the loop, the user is now on this uh, groundhog loop where uh, it never goes forward, and it's kind of frustrating. So the solution for this case is just want to make sure that you don't uh, you create a view hierarchy on, on create. So now, when the user tap to authenticate, we still launch the authenticate, uh, authenticate activity. The user say yes. Now, when we go back, we show the unlock data, and when the user select the data, then we are a few, and everybody's going to be happy. So these are my main uh, tips that I would like to give from this session. So basically, make sure you annotate your views for out of you. You test using standard services, and you make sure they work with the service authentication. So I have some links here. Uh, we have, uh, uh, if you go to the official out of field guides, we have, we're explaining all these topics, and we have links for the out of field sample services as well that also has all these uh, apps I'm using, I'm using for the out of field samples. So that's it. Uh, the, uh, thank you for coming. and. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.